Hi guys, I'm John Hennessy and we are here at our Hennessy Performance Headquarters in Sealy, Texas, just west of Houston, in our showroom with our Venom F5 display model. And I have a very special guest I want to introduce you to. This is John Heinrichsy, otherwise known as Heinrocket, or the special man. And um, we were talking earlier that we may end up doing a longer 30, 45 minute video. There's a ton of stuff that we could talk about. But I want for, for, for brevity, I wanted to just kind of talk a little bit today about how we met, what we're doing, some of the stuff that we've done, some of John's background, and also what are we, how does the F5 tie into this story? So about 10 years ago, you were getting ready to retire, and I read somewhere that you were retiring from GM. A mutual friend of ours, Joe Jacuzzi, still works at Chevrolet. Um, uh, I reached out to Joe, I'm like, hey, I read that Heinrocket is gonna retire from um, GM, and I, like to find a way to, to work with him, and we ended up connecting. Um, we ended up connecting back then, and I, again, I, uh, the little bit I knew about you then, I think you just set the record for going, if you're the first guy to drive with the Nurburgring under eight minutes in a, in a with sedan. With a sedan, right. CTSV. That's right, it just happened that year. So I think That's at right. that point in time, the CTSV was something that was very new to us, and I was excited about it, and I'm like, man, if we could get this Heinracket guy, this guy, what, tell, tell me, tell us and tell the, the viewer a little bit about kind of your background, you ended up at GM, you were there for your whole career, what, 38 years? Yeah, 38 and a half years, just about 39 years. Okay. I started in 1970, which seems like an eternity ago. Right. But, but, and then I did a training program right when I got there. This was Chevrolet Engineering. Okay. Did a training program there for two years, and during that two years, I got just some awesome assignments, one being in Chevrolet R&D, which okay. was a, a real lockdown facility where they did the top level racing like for Trans Am with uh, you know, Donahue and Penske, and, Penske and all those guys and players. the Can-Am stuff with yeah. the uh, aluminum big black engines right. that they used to know. So wow. that was all going on there. And, and boy, tell you, tell you about something that would suck me in. Right. I'd walk by the dynos and hear these engines screaming and they were actually running track simulations on the oh, dynos wow. with like a 302 engine yeah. sitting on the dyno. It was really awesome. So when you, so you came into GM, young engineer, got exposed to motorsports fairly early on. And then I think you told me you didn't do your first, you didn't run, drive your first race until you were how old? 37. 37. 1984. So there, is, there is hope for older guys like us. And uh, so you were 37 when you competed in your first race. What kind of car was that? That was actually a Chevrolet Citation. Oh yeah, come on. And then, X11 so, but how long did you have to wait before you won your first race? I actually won that, uh, First year, I ran in the uh, X11 Citation, and I won in my um, class race okay. when we did the training. So okay. I, w I had to do a training in uh, school. So that was your se school. second time you were in a race, you won. Yes. Okay. And then, uh, and then I started racing with uh, Gulfstrand and Morrison sometime during that year also, okay. and won my first race so with them. So kind of your, so you're you're working at GM by day, by the week, and progressively racing more and more on the weekends, and then. You just won two more SCCA national championships? Yep, so over the years I uh, got into SCCA racing, ran pro, ran SCCA, and I won, uh, I had 13 championships and still till uh, two weeks ago, okay. and I won two more races this year Dude, that, at the runoffs. That's so awesome, congratulations. So now it's 15. A man after my own heart, he, he retires and now has 15 SCCA national championships. And in the overall scheme of anybody and everybody that's ever raced in SCCA, where do you fit within the whole hierarchy? I'm sure there's other guys that are multiple. Number two. Number two overall. Number two. And the number one guy has how many wins? 27. 27. What, and you got a note from Mark Royce, the, 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 the product, the head product boss at, uh, at GM, and what did, he, what did he encourage you he to do? He basically said, you've got to go after it, John. You got I, to do it. I agree. You got to do it. And what do you think? Put it in your comments. <laughs> uh, I agree. I mean, look, you're, to me, you're like 31, 41. You're, today is your birthday. All right. You're 71. 71. I'm like, this is the most active, busiest, brightest, most talented 70 year one, 70 year old one, 71 year old person that I know. And I'm like, so you won the two more. You won 14 and 15 SCCA national right. championships out at Sonoma, and then. And then you came over to Coda for a vintage race. Right, that weekend. was the uh, SVRA uh, National Championships, okay. and I drove uh, um, a 69 Corvette Big Black, yeah. ZL1 mutual aluminum Big Black with yeah. a mutual friend, Jim yeah. Sandberg's yeah. car. And uh, that was their national championships, and I ended up winning that on Sunday wow. in the feature race. 
So well, I wouldn't want it overall cool. with that car. So you wonder why, what's our relationship? You, 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 you kind of get a sense for, and again, we could talk a lot more, but John, you're, you're 38 and a half years at GM. You're doing racing, but the racing is also, is also kind of goes hand in hand with your, your, your day job Absolutely. in terms of developing product, Corvette, CTSV. I kind of look at the job that I did at GM. I was like the driver in the car and everything about the car that needed to be developed to make mm -hmm. it right for the customer, mm -hmm. that's what I was responsible for. That's okay. what I had to make right. And it's kind of the same thing you do in a race tra on a racetrack in a race car. Mm -hmm. You have to make sure that that car does everything right. It's good for the driver ergonomics right. and it's fast and handles good. Right. So you win races. It's the same thing when you do the production cars. So there's a few guys out there. People probably are familiar with Valentino Balboni, the, the very famous uh, driver for Lamborghini, drove at one period of time, drove almost every car that came out of Lamborghini. And there's Chris Goodwin who was with, it was at, uh, he was at McLaren for a number of years and now I think he's at uh, Jag Range Rover. But you kind of, to me, you're like the Valentino Balboni of, of GM. At least, I mean, there are other guys, there's, uh, um, you know the guys that go over to the ring and all that stuff. Oh yeah, uh, anyway, all those guys. I mean, there, yeah. there's several very talented engineers and, and racers at, at, at GM and at other manufacturers, but you're the kind of the guy that like stands out to me. So kind of like, as I watch your career, knew what you're doing with racing and saw what you done with, did with the CTSV, setting the, you're the first guy to go under eight minutes at the Nürburgring and the Nordschleife, the, the big track. Um, and that was the CTSV, and you weren't even planning on doing that. You were just out testing, and we were trying to like, hey, we were, throw a camera in the car. And yeah, see we were happens. basically seeing how fast the car would go. We were kind of done with all the testing, and the, this was a development right. car, and we decided, well, let's see what it really will do because when you're testing it, you're not really trying to get the best lap all the time. Uh -huh. So we had the track uh, exclusively early in the morning, seven o'clock, and we went out and ran, mm -hmm. and uh, ran under eight minutes. And I didn't even know that was a record at the time. Wow! But our development manager started looking it up yeah, and he says, hey. on YouTube, you can check it out. Yeah, he said, hey, that's a record. Wow. And I said, wow. So we called Cadillac and by that night they were already on social media. Uh, so, I, yeah, so I'd seen all these incredible accomplishments kind of, again, maybe more towards the tail end of your career at GM. And I thought, man, you know, we know a few things about building horsepower and fast cars, but I'm like, a guy like John who understands automotive engineering, who's a racer, and who has this really rare combination of skills of being able to sort a car, you know? And so I reached out to John and asked him to come help us. I think at some point you helped us uh, on the Venom GT program, helped us on our suspension on that. And eventually we did a lot of aero testing, which eventually led to the 270 mile an hour record. Right. So what I knew about you. Okay, before, here we go. Here it, go here it goes. <laughs> here it comes. So the reason why when you called me that I said, yes, I'll go down there is what I knew about you was what I read in the magazines anytime there was a shootout. Okay. You always brought the most outrageously hey. powered car Got to, man. to every one of those shootouts. And I kept remembering that. Who is this Hennessy guy that brings these Vipers, you know? What is it, a thousand horsepower Viper? I don't know what it is. Yeah, it's always, you know, how bring, does he do bring all the, this? Bring the nuclear device and somebody else yeah. is bringing, bringing a pistol to, yeah. the, to the gunfight, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. right. And you'd go out and, and set wow. these numbers that were just incredible. And so that, when you called me, like, yeah, I know who that is. I'm well, gonna, birds we're gonna get together. And I, I think the, the thing that I wanted to share with the viewers is again, kind of a little bit of our history, some of the just amazing accomplishments that you've had in your career, both within the industry at GM and also in racing. And then you know, I, I tell people all the time about you, I'm like, you're the busiest, most talented retired person that I know. And, and so I'm so grateful to have you on our team and the thing that we wanted to share with the viewers, you know, we've had, since we unveiled the, the Venom F5 about a year ago at SEMA, um, you know, you know the behind the scenes story, but we'd spent quite a bit of time on the body exterior engineering and the design of the car and then veiling the car and building the engine. But I knew as I learned from the Venom GT program that there's this, everything that's underneath the skin is ultimately what makes the car. Right. And on, and on the Venom GT program, John didn't come in on the program until after the car was basically already engineered, already built, and you helped us really refine it to perform and do the things that we intended with it. So I thought, you know, this time around, it might be a good idea to, to bring John on board early on. Let's start a little earlier. Let's start a little earlier and, and, and have a very seasoned uh, guy uh, who's built a lot of amazing performance cars, including the Snake Scanner and uh, Trailblazer SS, and uh, I'm sure the list, and we'll do a longer video yeah. podcast or something at a later day, but I thought, you know, to have your 
involvement early on. So I wanted to take this opportunity to share with the world that John is our chief development engineer for the Venom FI program for Hennessy Special Vehicles. And I'm so honored to, we're gonna have so much fun. We had a lot of fun the last, the last go around. And, I'm uh, honored to be on it and I'm looking forward to it. And I'm looking forward to talking about it too, because I'd like to do that. Once we get going absolutely. on it and we have some more things we can talk about, it'll be a lot of fun. Well, we put a, we put a, we, I put a cat image out on uh, Instagram a few days ago. Uh, because I knew people, they ask us all the time. They ask a lot of the same questions, and that's that's great. We love the engagement. But I thought, what are your questions? So, I don't know, I think 18 or 19,000 likes later and over 1,000 questions. <laughs> and I tried to answer as many as we could. And again, if you're watching this, uh, as the, the development of the car and the road car and the prototype and the whole process is moving forward over the next several months, we'll be having more and more conversations with you and kind of sharing this up. We can't t let too much of the too much of the venom out of the bag yeah. too soon. But I think the big news for, for this video and, and for this particular moment in time is that you know, we're so honored and grateful to have your expertise and experience. And uh, just, you know, the, John's nickname is Hein Rocket and, and, and kind of the slogan that you came up with, I just paid one of your invoices, so I was looking, I was looking at your slogan, it says, winning is fun. Yeah. You know, and I guess my, I tell my kids, I'm like, I like to win, but I hate to lose. But I, but I love about you, it's like we, we were, we were go. We remember when we went go karting one time, and I'm yeah. like, and I'm like, I passed, I passed you. Like your tires weren't warmed up, and I passed you, and I bumped you, and kind of as I go, and I think I'm going along pretty good. And all of a sudden, boom, you tapped me, and you went around me, and you ended up winning the race, of course. And I just kind of like saw the joy that you get from <laughs> this, and the winning, winning is fun. Yeah, it is. And it is. So um, we're going to do some winning with the F5. We already have been winning with it, and uh, really and appreciate. And we're going to do some more. Absolutely. All right, man. Thank you. Okay, I'm we'll looking forward to it. Soon. All right, thank you, guys.